Whether you're trying to learn a little more about a person you've just met by snooping in their social media history, or interviewing a new employee, or trying to understand whether the mechanic is telling the truth about your car, reading people well is a priceless skill to have. 64,000 is the median number of words per book. Average person reads about 200 words per minute. Simple math will tell us that is one book in 320 minutes. To accomplish this in seven days, numbers say you would have to read for 45 minutes a day. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button, like, comment, and share. Enjoy. Welcome to the Book of the Week series. Every week, as I read another amazing title, I share it with the world. My name is Igor S.F. Walker. Today, we look at read people like a book. How to analyze, understand, and predict people's emotions, thoughts, intentions, and behaviors by Patrick King. So, how about you slow down and relax? Reduce all that noise for just a bit. Make that choice and decide to listen. In this video, we look at how to make appraisals of people's personalities and values from their speech, their behavior, and even their personal possessions. How to read body language and even how to detect a lie as it is happening. Stick around till the end. I will share with you some tools I have used that will help you tremendously in this game of life. Discover a way to find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. I will share some tools to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management. Have you ever been in a conversation with a group of people only to later find out that different members of the group had a completely different assessment of what happened. Sometimes people disagree entirely on whether someone was flirting, whether someone was uncomfortable or offended, whether someone was feeling off or being rude. It can feel like you were living in two separate realities. How can we really know what is going on inside their minds? Theory of mind is the term we use to describe the ability to think about other people's cognitive and emotional realities. It is the perfectly human desire to make a model about someone else's thoughts, feelings, and actions. And like any model, it is a simplification of the depth and complexity of the real person in front of us. Like any model, it has limitations and it doesn't always perfectly explain reality. Analyzing and reading people is about much, much more than simply having hunches or knee-jerk emotional reactions about them, though instinct and gut feeling do play a role. We are focused here on methods and models that have sound theoretical evidence and seek to go beyond simple bias or prejudice. After all, we actually want our analysis to be accurate if there is to be any use of it to us. The fact is, the people are often far less accurate judges of character than they like to believe. Firstly, the biggest thing to remember is the effect of context. You cannot take a single statement, facial expression, behavior, or even a moment to tell us something definitive about the whole person. Analysis can only happen with data, not, not a single datum. And it can only happen when we are able to see broader trends. If a person does the same unusual thing five times in a single short conversation, then that's something to pay attention to. If someone simply claims, oh, I know that woman, she's an introvert. I saw her reading a book once. 
you wouldn't exactly call them a master at unraveling the human psyche. <coughs> So it is worth remembering another important principle in our analysis. We look for patterns. Another way that smart people can come to not so smart conclusions about others is if they fail to establish a baseline. Finally, there's something to consider when you are studying other human beings, and it's often a real blind spot yourself. You might decide that someone is trying to deceive you, but completely fail to take into account your own paranoid and cautious nature. And the fact that you were recently lied to, and you are not quite over it just yet. The final point may ironically be the real key to unlocking other people, making sure we understand ourselves at a bare minimum before we turn our analytical gaze outward. Respect context. Look for patterns, not single events. By remembering a few simple principles, we can ensure that our analysis is always contextual well-considered and then three-dimensional. It is about synthesizing the information we have in front of us in, into a coherent working theory, rather than simply spotting a stereotypical behaviors and then coming to easy conclusions. To grasp the real, non-verbal conversation or dialogue that someone is engaging in with you, you need to consider both their verbal as well as non-verbal cues. Knowing how to read other people's emotions has been linked to overall higher social intelligence, which then links to better cooperation on teams, empathic understanding, and better people reading skills. What people say is often a poor indicator of what they want to convey which makes people reading a valuable life skill, almost endless benefits. Although we are all blessed with different aptitudes, it is possible to develop this skill in ourselves as long as we can be honest about where we are starting from. The culture people come from is another important factor that helps contextualize your analysis appropriately. Behavior is meaningless in a void. We do need to establish a baseline so that we do know how to interpret what we do see. We become great people readers. When we do understand ourselves, we need to know what biases, expectations, values, and unconscious drives we bring to the table so we are able to see things as neutrally and as objectively as possible. <coughs> Why bother to understand people at all? Why go through the trouble of learning about how people operate and why? To get a grip on any behavior, to understand it, to predict it, or even influence it somehow, you need to understand what is fueling it, i.e. you need to understand what motivates a person. You do have your reasons, conscious or unconscious, and another person might gain considerable insight into who you are by knowing what those motivations are. People are motivated by psychological, social, financial, even biological and evolutionary factors, all of which could interact with one another in interesting ways. What do people care about? Asking about interests, values, goals, and fears is more or less asking about motivations. Once you do know where a person is coming from in this sense, you can start to understand them in their own world, in their own terms. So be curious, but be kind. Your goal is identifying someone's possible shadow. It's not to catch them out or to get a one-up on them, <coughs> or to figure out a button 
you can push for your own gain. Instead, it's about seeing holes in a world which is often split, broken, divided, and unconscious. And if you can't see the shadow in operation in someone else, it is also an invitation to look honestly inside ourselves. Now, once we can look at another person's shame, fear, doubt, and rage with acceptance and understanding, then we can do the same for ourselves. Very astute and observant people know that when a person insults you with, what they insult you with is nothing more than a label that they cannot acknowledge they actually give to themselves. Now, if you realize this, you can keep your cool in such a conversation. If not, you may get hooked into a mutual ego defense session. <laughs> the next time you meet someone, quickly run through the following questions to help you see them on a deeper level. What is this person actively and consciously portraying to me right now? What might this person be unwilling to acknowledge about themselves? How might this unacknowledged part of themselves be unconsciously driving the behavior that I do see on the surface? How is this person making me feel right now? Do I feel like they're projecting onto me or triggering my own shadow? How can I communicate compassion and understanding for what is in their shadow right now? Some amazing questions. The use of micro-expression analysis is a bit like CSI. It always looks a bit more impressive on TV than it is in real life. Furthermore, the goal in developing a skill of micro-expression analysis is not to play gotcha to our friends and colleagues, but rather to enhance our own empathy, emotional intelligence, and then foster a richer understanding of the people around us. It is the more primitive, emotional, and perhaps honest part of our brain, the limbic brain, that is responsible for these automatic responses, while the prefrontal cortex, which is the more intellectual and abstract part of our brain, is a little removed from the body and more under conscious control. It is also the part that is capable of lying. But even though a person can say one thing, their bodies will always speak the truth. Now, if you can tune into the gestures, movements, postures, patterns of touching, and even the clothing a person wears, you give yourself a more direct channel into what they really think and feel. Humankind, most likely communicated by gestures, simple sounds and facial expressions. In fact, from the moment a baby is born, it's instinctively making faces to communicate. That it is cold, hungry, frightened. We never needed a need to think or to be taught how to read basic gestures or understand tones of voice. This is because nonverbal communication was our first way of communication and may still be our preferred form. The general principle is pretty obvious. Bodies expand when they are comfortable, happy, or dominant. They contract when unhappy, fearful, or threatened. Bodies move toward what they like and away from what they do not like. Leaning toward a person can show agreement, comfort, flirtation, ease, and interest. Likewise, crossing the arms, turning away, leaning back, and using tightly crossed legs as a barrier shows a person's unconscious attempt to get away from or to protect themselves from something unwanted. As you are developing your body language reading skills. It may help to keep a few key principles in mind. Establish normal behavior. Look for unusual or incongruent behavior. Gather plenty of data. Look for mirroring. Pay attention to energy. Remember 
that body language is dynamic. And context is everything. Generally, a relaxed body takes up space, while an anxious body contracts and wants to conceal and comfort itself. Always interpret your conversation in light of what you already know, the context, and then other details you do observe in your own interactions with this person. It is all about looking at patterns and then trying to determine if any disruptions in the pattern point to something interesting. Do not be afraid to trust your gut instinct. Your unconscious mind may have picked up some data that your conscious mind hasn't become aware of just yet. Casual observation of body language, voice, and verbal cues can help with understanding honest people, but we need more sophisticated techniques to help us detect liars. Most people are not as good at spotting deception as they do think that they are. Bias, expectation, and the belief that we can't or shouldn't be lied to can get into the way of realizing we are being deceived. Increasing cognitive load can cause a liar to fumble their story or to lose track of details, revealing themselves in a lie. So keep drilling for details and then be suspicious if details do not add up, if emotions do not match content, or if the person is deliberately, deliberately stalling for time. Facial expressions and body language. It is important to know that though many aspects have been scientifically proven with psychological origins, we cannot say that simple observations are foolproof. It can never be definitive, because there are too many external factors to do to take into account, but we can better understand what typical things to look for, and what we can glean from them. Two types of facial expressions, micro and macro expressions. Macro expressions are larger, slower, and more obvious. They are also routinely faked and consciously created. Now, micro expressions are actually the opposite of all of those things. Incredibly quick, almost unperceivable, and unconscious. What we need is to read the body as a whole, and then look for general clusters of behavior that work together to communicate a unified message. The voice can be thought of as a part of the body, and then read like other body language. And there you have it read people like a book, how to analyze, understand, and predict people's emotions, thoughts, intentions, and behaviors. Now, please, do help out. It is easy. Simply like this video so more people can enjoy it. Share it, too, and spread the word. Do leave your comment and share your thoughts. Subscribe to my channel and stay up to date. And the link to this book, well, it's in the description below. So you buy it and you read and you never stop learning, especially learning about yourself and nature. So gift yourself by taking the free human needs test on my website and then find out what actually motivates you, what innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. And if you feel you are ready to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management even further. Well, then do check out my Master of Life Awareness program. The links are in the description below. Thank you. Love and respect.